Indie Attack. I'm Woody. I'm Kelson. And today we're looking at Auru's Awakening, um, specifically the PS4 version of this game. This is a very pretty platformer. Yeah. Where you play as this weird owl bear creature, and um, you are tasked with doing something involving the sum, the sun. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's kind of a story to this. I didn't really pay attention too much to be all that honest with you. It wasn't very engaging for me. How dare you? <laughs> um, in any case, uh, that leads to platforming. Yes. And as your weird owl bear creature, um, who is Aru, presumably? Aru. Aru. Um, you, your main ability is that you can launch yourself as a light ball mm. and teleport yourself right. as both a platforming mechanic and an attack. So, like, for an attack, you know, you shoot your little teleport sphere and you teleport inside of a monster and it blows up. Blast them. Or you shoot through a tiny little gap in the environment. Right. And you'll do that. And you also have, like, some standard, you know, platforming stuff. You can do, like, a double jump thing. You can do a jump and a dash. Sure, sure. Kind of stuff. You know, the things you would expect from a lot of platformers. Yeah. So, now, first thing to note of seeing this game, this is a really pretty game. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, It's got some really nice... It's got, like, a nice, funky, kind of mythical art style. And that's yeah. what the story's about. It's a lot of mythical... The game just looks kind of, like, carved out of sandstone. You know? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of, like, cool... Like, a lot of, like... The, the color palette is really consistent looking. Yeah. Like, really gorgeous. And, like, each world has a different color palette. Because, like, the first one, it's a lot of, like, orange and yellow and red. And then you move on to... Because all the different realms are based off times of the day. So there's, like, dawn, day, dusk, and night. Mm, yeah, yeah. Second game I'm citing today about Okami, you know, that <laughs> reminded me. It's just saying, you know, you're this mythical creature, and it's this gorgeous kind of colorful world. So, that's... So, yeah, the art style is great. Then you get into the gameplay. The gameplay's got some issues. Um, in order to look as good as it does, mm -hmm. this game's camera has to be pulled in pretty close. Ah, uh, yes. And for a lot of games, you know, not necessarily a problem... But for this game, um, you're fast, and your platforming in this game, you could, it's more bestial than a lot of other games, so you need more space. It's kind of almost Sonic-like, mm. and like how much space you need to move around. And having that real close-in camera really limits um, how much you can see in front of you. And this, unfortunately, leads to a lot of trial and error gameplay. So it sacrifices some of the substance that you can have so, in platforming for yeah. the visual... So let's say you want your teleport sphere into a room well you can see far enough to launch into the room mm. but not enough to be able to react to anything once you are inside of it right so then oh i teleported into a room and lava's on the floor well i guess i had to go higher gotcha and there's a lot of stuff like that there's a lot of my platform is ending i have to jump i don't know where i'm jumping to yeah because i can't see the other edge of this thing i assume i'm just gonna have to double jump and dash and toss my little light orb and then i'll teleport to a space over here right and after a, a while that adds up yeah after a, that adds up and it's also as cool of a gimmick as the tele teleport thing is i played this game about halfway through this is not a very long it's like maybe three hours mm -hmm. total mm -hmm. um i played like half of this game i got it for free on like the psn plus thing and um the, the, the teleporting gimmick runs out of juice, I think, relatively early on. Okay. I feel like from what I played, they were starting to lose kind of new ideas about how to do it. Because there's some really cool stuff that you do. Like, the especially launching yourself through tiny little gaps and doing, like, almost a pinball thing mm. of bouncing off all this different yeah, stuff. Yeah, really cool. It's cool. Yeah. And getting in fights with enemies where you have to teleport inside of them, that's cool. Right. But there's only so many ways to do that before it's like, okay, well, this is the same way I was fighting this, you know, 30 minutes ago. Yeah. In World like, 1. Right. Yeah. Not evolving. So, yeah, it's just the not evolving. It's, um... Yeah. So... And like I said, that it's it's not a long game too, which is another thing that makes it kind of hard to recommend. Yeah, right. It's, well, you're you know, paying, especially because this yeah. is a pay, this is not a free game. Right. right. This is a paid download. Yeah, we often do free games, but we do check out you know yeah. paid, paid games. When it they was come free our for way. me because yeah. I had PSN. <laughs> right. But... And there's probably people out there you know who got yeah. it you know the same way, and it's like yeah, maybe not really one to invest so, into. It's not a game I'm gonna finish. Which for a game I got to free for free. I think is kind of telling. Yes. Like, I don't hate this game, sure. but, and the art style is neat, but there's just not a lot to keep me. Gameplay. For the yeah. entire length. You gotta have gameplay, man. You know? Yeah, and I just, it's, the gameplay is not there for me. So, you can check out Aura's Awakening 
if you want to, but I guess we're going to go ahead There's and say, PC yeah, and PS maybe pass on PC, that PS4, but it's not a must-play. You know, if you get it cheap in a sale or something, you might you might want to try it. You know, it's only a three-hour game. Right. If you pay for a three-hour price, then maybe it'll be good. 